This series was about close encounters of animal with animals and things. I think we've officially succeeded. I think we have as well. way of having an amazing African experience when it comes to an wild animals is to do what you've seen on the travel brochures and on the TV. Fly in, go to a lodge, be pampered, get on the back of a, a couple of seats next to some people that you don't know in a vehicle and go to see game. But it misses some of the flavors and tastes of Africa as far as I'm concerned. Self-driving, to me, is the ultimate way of really getting the flavors of Africa and sucking them up and just living the African experience. This is the alternative, Jeremy. <laughs> what do you reckon? It's definitely an alternative. Thank you for everything else we've done. <laughs> <laughs> My goal is to go out via self-drive, <clears throat> almost exclusively camping, to areas where the animals will come really close to me, get really close to my camp. Big five game walking through your campsite. And that's why I'm here. I'm going to go and find those magic places where you can get superb close encounters with African animals. As I'm walking, they're very jittery. There are a lot of hyena around. It smells like elephant. You just had a pee outside. How do you feel now? <laughs> Cape Town International Airport. I'm about to board a flight to Wintook, the capital of Namibia. That's about a two hour flight north of here. In Wintook, I'll be collecting my vehicle for this year's expedition. And I should mention that, that this is Cape Town, where I used to live. Cape Town is celebrating in a tr they are celebrating like never before. They were about to come, and this was about a month and a half ago, about to become the only city in the world to have ever actually run out of water. They were literally within a week of turning off the taps and the rain started falling and it hasn't stopped. I've been here for three days. It's poured down every single day. Everybody is ecstatic. The relief here is <clears throat> tangible. I'll be leaving, picking up our truck and heading off into the bush. Wintook is an easy two hour flight from Cape Town which means getting a glimpse of the great Namib Desert beneath us, where we will be meeting a representative from Tech Pro Safaris, the safari company that's loaned us one of its brand new safari rental land cruisers. This will be our home for the next four weeks. Pretty nice, eh? The vehicle we've been given is part of a new fleet of overland rental vehicles based out of Wintook, Namibia an ideal location from which to start a safari expedition into southern Africa. Okay, that's my map. Yeah, that's... that. Uh, what? Oh, is that the one you I, brought? I drew that. Oh. <laughs> I drew it. Okay. I had a mapping company. Okay. And really? I sold it in 2008 and Seriously? that's their edition. Wow. I owned okay. it for map. That's my okay. mapping company. It's the full package. We should have everything we need for our four-week so, um, safari. All right. That's just about, that's just about it. It's stock up time. We've uh, been to the supermarket and we've got all our supplies for our trip. And it's now a case of finding their places inside the truck to make things as convenient as possible. The thing that struck me about coming back to South Africa after five years being away 
it's just how horrendously expensive things in South Africa are. But if we ever decide to come back and live in Africa, we'll come and live in Namibia in Vintuk because like we've just piled in stuff here and it's very cheap. Today's drive is an easy one to a campsite just before crossing into Botswana. Just stopped for a, uh, a lunch, brief lunch stop. Uh, we are a couple of hours still west of the Botswana border. The vehicle that I'm driving is a Toyota Land Cruiser 79. The 79 is part of the 70 series, of course, but with the double cab, the dual cab, the four door. The conversion is done by Paul Marsh in Cape Town. The main bits consist of canopy made by Alucab, rooftop tent also made by Alucab, and other bits and pieces from various manufacturers. That's our home for the next Gwyn, two weeks, me, four weeks. The vehicle has been loaned to Gwyn and I by Tech Pro Safaris. They are the new kid on the block. They are building a series of rental vehicles, including Land Cruisers and Hiluxes, uh, for, they call themselves the Luxury Overland Fleet. Liver spread from German Namibia. Probably quite good. Yes. And my job now is to find out whether the word luxury really works in this context. You have to eat it with a German accent. Oh dear. We arrive well before sunset. Plenty of time to figure out the camping equipment that comes with the truck, as well as get used to being in the African bush again. And this is bush breaks near the Botapus uh, Botswana border, which is about 30 kilometers-ish uh, further east. We'll be crossing the border tomorrow. It's so nice and early actually, no rush, we've had an extremely relaxed day. This is how touring Southern Africa should be, actually touring anywhere should be. Nice and relaxed, chilled, no hurry, and lots of birds, there's a water hole. And the whole area here is pitted with holes, those are probably mongoose, and um, just game tracks. What kind of game tracks are we seeing here? So it's just too many to single them out but I don't think this is a cattle area because if this is a cattle area you'd have lots of droppings and there are no droppings, no cattle droppings. It's used because the footprints are fresh, there are no, often there are spider's webs in the entrance of holes like this but there are none which means it's, this is very active. This, the area where we're at now is actually between the, the Namib and the Kalahari. The area is actually, it's quite distinguishable from each other but the transition from the one to the other is actually very very gentle. This part of Namibia is fenced game farms huge 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 game farms but this area here very close to the border is not and this is unfenced bush wilderness so in a place like this it's a good chance all kinds of wild animals. Gwyn has just discussed the likelihood of game visiting us with the local caretaker. Just antelope, mm. uh, antelope yes. and zebra, but I mean the zebra dropping over there that I noticed. Yes. Um, they turn the light on at night and there's some campers over in the eco camp. That's okay. my news for the day. Now, it's been the first time that I'm uh, that I'm setting up the car for camping, the ease with which I do it will be a measure to me of how well Tech Pro Safaris have sorted out the camping, generally speaking. Uh, I put that there. Uh, so that's not a measure, even though it fell out of the car while well, the camera is running. I'm not going to take it out. Uh, and everything is very well organized in the vehicle. Lots of places to put it. Everything has got a kind of set location. Now the truth is that I actually changed a lot of those locations because I'm used to a certain way of camping. I've done it so often. But I've also left quite a bit of it as it would be delivered. And you, my friend, if I'm not mistaken, are uh, one of those on the page towards the back of the book with a white front and kind of this big. This is typical man-made waterhole. 
the campsite. We're over there. Lucian Block's over there. There's another campsite over there. And actually there are some campers in the thorn trees over there. This is a wild area. It's not fenced. Will we see big game? I have absolutely no idea. This time of year, there is not a lot of standing water around, so water holes like this tend to attract a lot of animals. During the summer months, there might be so much water all around that nothing comes here, or virtually nothing, uh, comes here typically of an evening when the animals are then looking for water. You never know. You never, never know. And I look around, the spur, the game, tra the place is absolutely covered with spur, with game. So a lot of animals come here a lot of the time. Another sign that this is a well used by animals, this is called a midden. It's a, it's a latrine. And this here, those are almost certainly impala droppings. Uh, they're not particularly, oh, those are fresh. Those are fresh. These other ones aren't. Well, this is interesting. This is what's known as a salt lick. It's literally a block of salt. The animals can come lick it. And, um, well, game farmers will often do it. Uh, near a water hole is a great place because the animals will come here and then they'll find it. Animals uh, benefit enormously from salt licks, particularly this time of year when the grass has very little nutrition and to be able to take some salt intake together with water, it's, it, it really makes a huge difference to the animals in the area to have that available to them. Okay, that's a good idea. As a choice of tent uh, for a rental package like this, the, the Gen 3 Alley Cabs, good one. It's very quick to get up and down. It's very hassle-free. Um, so that's a good, good choice. <coughs> so we're, uh, we're cooking a little bit of a meal. And of course the, the light has been turned on over there, overlooking the waterhole. And the lens is ready, uh, the long lens is ready to capture anything should it happen. So there is an animal there in the dark. It hasn't come into the light yet. It is a kudu female, I would say. I'm waiting for it to come into the light. I need to turn off or to focus. Hmm? She's over there. I can see her. She's yeah, running. she's away from the light. She's obviously nervous because of us. She's quite nervous about, about us. She's skittish. She keeps looking at us, stopping, but out of the light. I think she's an impala. For the first time, we can get a good look at him. It's a male oh, impala. Oh, there's somebody else coming. A couple more animals coming now. There's another one coming behind the tree. And they're passing in front of our campsite. It's rather lovely. Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning, 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 morning. Very, very cold night, very cold night. Uh, the wind was blowing a bit last night, which means in this part of the world, in winter, that a cold front is coming through and it hit us last night with a vengeance. I reckon we had temperatures of, I'd be surprised if they were higher than minus six or seven. Um, and we were, we, were, we, were, we were very cold, but we survived it, we survived it. And Today, today's the expedition starts today. We head east into Botswana, then further east and into the fabled Central Kalahari Game Reserve, which is, in terms of its amount of space, 
one of the largest conservation areas on Earth. And hopefully we will see more there than we saw in our little waterhole last night. This is Kansi, the cattle farming town and the last stop for us before we head to the Central Kalahari Game Reserve. Passing into Botswana was very quick, very easy, nobody at the border post and that whole process through the border took about 20 minutes and of course fueling up and getting our last bit of shopping always takes considerably more but looking forward to getting into the wilderness. We're on the, uh, the Calcrete Road. Calcrete is a white stone that they make gravel roads in Botswana with and it's quite blinding on the eye. Um, the road to the Central Kalahari Game Reserve. Filled up with fuel, but we're actually chasing the sun. We didn't mean to find ourselves in this situation, but we found that the vehicle being so strange to us, it, it took a long time to get out of camp this morning. I mean, oh, well over an hour and a half, longer than we thought it might, because it was just, you know, a re we've struggled with the, with, the, with the car because of the... Um, Anyway, I won't go into details. Look, we are chasing the, the sun. We will find ourselves tonight, I'm sure, inside uh, the reserve. Probably not at the spot that I was hoping for, but we will be in game country. So the road has become a track, quite soft sand, and we're getting very, very close to the boundary fence of the Central Kalahari Game Reserve. There's probably going to be a, an area where we have to check in to show us, show them our bookings. They control access quite, uh, quite strictly. Um, and how long that is, where is that, and how much time? I don't know. It's, uh, but I am thinking about dropping my tire pressures because uh, it's getting thick. Yeah, it's tire pressure dropping time because this, we're, we're going to get stuck. If we continue like this, let's do that. Right. Lucky I remembered where to put this, where I put this. The Land Cruiser comes equipped with ARB tyre gauge and built-in pump, which will make my job quite easy. Ah, uh, 60 kilometres of this at an average speed of 30 kilometres an hour is two hours. Ah, uh, this is a nail biter. Our average speed, I mean, is going from 30 to 40, occasionally to 45, back to 30, and we have approximately 30 kilometers to go, and it's exactly one hour until they close the gate. It is a nail biter. Stay with us, folks, as we do our best to get into the reserve this evening. And I hope we do, because there are not too many campsites around. Very, very thick bush very very thick sand Whew, this is going to be close action okay this is the discovery channel version i'll be wearing a bandana and i'll be saying things like if we don't make the park gate by nightfall we're both gonna die <laughs> and what will take us uh, Ellen lions will eat us alive wow. Ellen lions lions will eat us alive Will they make it, folks? Run commercial. Okay, do you want to talk to us? Yeah. Uh, we just uh, came across a signpost. Sorry, we didn't film it. No time to stop. Uh, the race is too close. It said we are 24 kilometers out and we have to do that in 40 minutes. So we might make it. Uh, if the road doesn't deteriorate, we'll make it. We didn't make it. We're, it's getting, it's dark. Uh, the last thing I want to do is to have to set up camp in the dark and the area inside the reserve will be very similar to this. Uh, so we've uh, decided to uh, pull over and camp. We found a little bit of an opening here, a little flat bit here. Uh, it's very pretty and this is where we'll spend the night. 
we gave it a we really gave it a good shot but uh, I think we would have got I think we would have got there on time but doc what's the point in that so we did we did try our best but that's where we are we'll camp here the night and uh, yes oh we saw elephant dung haha -ha! elephant there are elephant in the area yes and in fact Gwynny this is on my way, on my way. What are those tracks? It's freshly turned earth. Oh wow, isn't that that's elephant? Look at it. It is. Something's different. Look, at, look that's elephant, Gwenny. That is elephant. Oh, wow. Look. That is without question that's elephant. A very fresh elephant track. No Shit. question. Are we there's in some oh there's his dropping. We're oh. not in his path, are we? Well, yes. Well this is his path right through here. It's and uh, that's not particularly new. Okay. But those tracks weren't that we've now walked on. No, I think that they were the same age as him. It makes sense that that's what's happened. So what that means is that we are actually in the in the reserve itself. We we haven't officially crossed into the, but we're in. We're in the. Otherwise, we would probably not have a lot of elephant and things around. But there they are. And we saw a lot on the a lot of tracks. A lot of. Um, Elephant dung on the on the road. There's lots around here, Gwynny. Look at it all. It's not that new though. Mm -hmm. It's dry. It's not that new, it's pretty dry. Uh, that means that there were elephant here. A uh, big group here. There's obviously a big group enjoyed this place and spent a bit of time here. And this is what an elephant footprint looks like. You can actually see the little, it's almost like tire tracks. It's little, little things like this. And it's a big, fl very large flat area. And you can see the little, little indentations. Because their feet aren't flat. They've actually got little ripples in their feet. That's pretty nice actually. Hmm? Yes it is. That's really pretty great. Pretty exciting actually. And we're in. Botswana will always be elephants for me, as a result of our year at Delta Camp. Uh, yes, synonymous with elephants, absolutely, yes. All right, shall we set up camp? Yeah, I reckon. How was your night? I slept well last night. Nothing happened at ten past two. Ah, what happened at ten past two? You, you were completely dead to the world. You were absolutely dead to the world. An elephant shook the tent. You lie. The whole car did this. I heard this enormous noise. I thought, it's an elephant. I just knew with it. it my, my, my processing brain from waking up to realizing that is an elephant's trunk on the roof of the tent. Oh, well, I can sleep through a bloody earthquake, obviously. You could. So I unzipped. And, and you it, looked in an elephant's eye. No, no, you no, lying no, 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 not not in an elephant's eye. He had walked off, and he was behind them bushes there. You weren't lying. <clears throat> there are tracks. There's a track there, as fresh as it comes. Look at them there and there. I mean, that one's really fresh. Even here, here. Yeah. There might be more, but uh, I must say, you never get used to it. You know, getting very, very close to an animal that's that size. You know, that size. Mm. You never get used to it. But anyway, we'll, well, I'm sure we'll have a few more as time goes on. But you and I broke a fundamental rule of camping. Well, we even spoke about it last night. We, but we were so shattered. We said, have we parked in an elephant's track? And you, we said, parked... and you said to me, yes, we have. Let's go and look <laughs> at the dung. <laughs> in the next episode, Gwyn realises something. Idiots abroad, what can I say? I get all nostalgic. This is that same river, and we make friends with a bird. This new series is available now in 4K exclusively to our Patreons. The YouTube releases will begin October 2018. It's been an amazing, amazing day.